Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to talk about recliners, and we'd like to thank Ara Jr. for a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, and we appreciate the reviews and ratings on Apple. We've gotten quite a few... good ones. (laughs) We've gotten a couple new five-star ratings, but no one left a name. I got an email from Carif Engineered Fabrics about last week's episode on Arroyos and Swales. We mentioned their drain sleeve drainage filter sock for perforated pipe. You slide their filter over perforated pipe to block sand, silt, and other debris, and it prevents the openings from getting blocked. I said their sleeve works on a four-foot pipe, and I should have said it works on four-inch diameter pipe. Way to go. <laughs> so it works on four-inch diameter perforated pipe. <laughs> Early recliners were modeled after the chaise lounge, and I'm using the American pronunciation. Say it with the French. French, chaise longue. <laughs> in France, in the 1850s, a chair was designed that could recline into a chaise lounge and then into a bed. In the late 1800s, reclining chairs with padded seats and backs were made, and they had a book holder. Hmm. In 1927, in the U.S., two cousins, Edwin Shoemaker and Edward Knebush, created a wood slatted porch chair that reclined. A local store owner suggested they should upholster the chair so it could be used as an indoor chair. And they tried a few names for their new indoor padded recliners, like the automatic adjustable chair and sit and snooze. Hmm. But they decided on Lazy Boy, and they spelled it L-A, capital Z, capital Mm B-O-Y. And that had to be one of the first companies to use crazy spelling for their product. (laughs) They hired celebrities to endorse their chairs, like Bing Crosby, Johnny Carson, Joe Namath, and Brooke Shields. And you know, one of the first celebrities to endorse a pen was Mark Twain in 1903. What? He was a paid spokesperson for Conklin Pens, and Conklin is C-O-N-K-L-I-N. He said he preferred Conklin Pens 10 to 1 over other fountain pens because it had a raised area on the pen so it wouldn't roll off his desk. He said it was a profanity saver, and Conklin still makes fountain pens. Well, that's good to know, but what does that have to do with recliners? I thought it was interesting. Oh, boy. How long did you research that? I went down a rabbit hole on celebrity endorsements <laughs> and, and how far back they go for quite a while. <laughs> we got out to a few stores this week to look at recliners, and there are quite that's a very few. very exciting. <laughs> that's fun research, you know, just yep. sitting and yep. reclining <laughs> and asking questions, mm-hmm. having the salespeople just stand there next to you while you're asking them questions. And there's quite a few styles you can get, plus a lot of custom fabrics and patterns and colors. Right. When you're shopping for a recliner, stores vary in how they group the styles. I think the three main groups are a standard-looking recliner that's very padded and the feet usually aren't visible. High-leg recliners usually have wood feet that are very visible And all of the padding looks more like a traditional chair, Mm -hmm. and they come in a range of styles from formal to contemporary. Some of the high leg recliners don't have footrests that extend, so they'll push back, and you would have an ottoman to put your feet on. Okay. And then lift recliners. These have a powered lift mechanism to raise the seat and tilt the whole chair forward to help you get out of the recliner. Mm Mm-hmm. In a standard recliner style that's manually operated, you can have one, two, or three positions for the footrest, and usually the back of the chair can be pushed back to a range of positions. The footrest can have a lever, or it can be operated by pushing on the armrests and the back of the chair, Mm -hmm. or it can have a small lever or a button. Power recliners have a remote that's connected to the chair, or buttons that are integrated into the chair to allow you to move the footrest and the back to any angle. 
And this is going to give you control to put the chair exactly where it's the most comfortable. Mm-hmm. At the Lazy Boy store we went to, they had a style they called Duo, D-U-O. It was a high leg recliner that was powered, so you plugged it in. And the salesperson said they also have a cordless version. No of way. That. Yeah, how cool is that? Rocker and glider recliners allow you to rock when you're sitting up. Right. If you have a baby or plan on having kids, a recliner that rocks or glides can be relaxing for you and your baby. An article in Mothering Magazine said studies show rocking can soothe some fussy babies, and it's more relaxing for the parent holding the baby. Mm -hmm. Rocking can stimulate the balance mechanism of the inner ear and assist in infant's brain development and attentiveness. Really? It's interesting, huh? Something as simple as rocking. Hmm. Gliders are going to have a smoother forward and backward motion than a rocker. And if you're going to be feeding kids on a rocker, I'd probably look for fabrics that are easy to clean. (laughs) There are swivel recliners. The base spins, so you can change the direction you're facing. You can also get a rocking, swiveling recliner. No way. (laughs) Massage recliners have motors to vibrate different areas of the chair, or it can have airbags that expand and contract to give a pulsating effect. A couple of the chairs we looked at, they looked very space age. It looked like something you would sit in in a rocket. It had cushions on the leg rest that wrap halfway around your legs, and the airbags inside the fabric grab and squeeze your legs and massage them. A massage recliner can also have rollers that give a deeper massage to your muscles, and they can move in different directions, even circular patterns. Hmm. So this is a recliner that you should really test out to see whether it's comfortable on your body. Right. Some massage recliners also have a heat option to help relax your muscles or warm you up in cool weather. Hmm. One salesman called it a massage robot, (laughs) so that caught my attention. He said similar chairs are used in healthcare facilities. Hmm. And Mayo Clinic says studies show massage can help people cope with injury, pain, and stress. Cool. Lay flat recliners lay back so you can take a nap. Mm -hmm. Zero gravity recliners also lay back for napping or relaxing. The term zero gravity was coined by NASA for the position astronauts are in when they're being launched into space. The zero gravity recliners lay back and they raise your legs to the same height or higher than your heart, and that improves blood circulation. Some studies suggest that 20 to 30 minutes in a zero gravity chair in the reclined position can reduce pain and swelling in your legs, improve lung function, increase blood oxygen levels, relax spinal muscles and compression on spinal discs, and it reduces headaches for some people. Interesting. Yeah. Many recliners need to be about 12 inches away from a wall so you can recline, but some that fully recline need even more room. Right. Wall hugger recliners can be closer to the wall. The seat area slides forward so you can be closer. You don't need as much space. Hmm. A few styles I looked at could be put four to six inches away from a wall. And it's something to compare how much distance you need from a wall when you're right. looking at different models. That way you know what's going to fit your room and, you know, the furniture where you're going to place this chair. Right. So my dad always loved a Lazy Boy chair. Really, I mean, he loved it like he slept in it. I mean, I <laughs> don't remember the last time I saw him in a bed. <laughs> so it was always a big consideration of, like, what size chair to get because it had to be tall enough because he was six feet. So okay, sure. it had to be tall enough for him and then... The placement of the chair in the room because he slept in it, so he fully reclined. Right. Um, so it's always a big decision when they got a new chair. <laughs> and it's funny because like they always had a chair, a lazy boy chair, growing up, and I never sat in it though because it was for dad. And I'm only five two, so my feet went only went like halfway down right. the chair, and then <laughs> right. because he was in it all the, all the time. I mean, his, the cushion was like molded to his butt, shaped <laughs> so. shaped to his frame, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, custom. Yes. A lift recliner has a powered mechanism that lifts the chair up and forward, and that's going to help you into a standing position. Mm -hmm. And this is great if you have knee or hip problems. I was reading a blog on a healthcare site, and they recommended a zero-gravity recliner with a lift mechanism for patients recovering from some types of surgeries, injuries, 
patients with COPD and other respiratory issues, and for their elderly clients with limited mobility. Mm -hmm. My grandfather had one of these when he got older, okay. and it really helped him, you know, helped him get up, so right. he's still able to get around. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they had really old furniture in the basement, Okay. and he had a recliner there. It was one that swiveled, but it didn't, the legs didn't come out. Oh, okay. So. Just um, the back went back? Yeah. So they always had an ottoman, but my whole life I was never allowed to sit in that because it was grandpa's chair. <laughs> right. I've had a lot of experiences with recliners, and I've. Never actually sat in one because <laughs> I wasn't allowed to. <laughs> well, it's funny. My grandpa in Bassett, so my whole childhood growing up, I spent every summer there. Uh -huh. And, you know, grandpa's recliner was grandpa's recliner. Right. Yep. And the only time I got to jump into it was when grandpa wasn't around. Because <laughs> the minute he's in the living room, yeah. you know, make room for grandpa, please. <laughs> Some other features you can get are cup holders built into the arms, mm. storage areas in the arms. Oh, my dad would have liked that. Yeah. He always had a TV tray next to him to hold sure. like the remote and his <laughs> cup. Yeah, I saw one with a tray that like tipped out. Oh. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And a <laughs> phone holder. A lot of the powered chairs had USB chargers and lumbar support where you could control the padding for the small of your back. Hmm. And if you're thinking about a powered recliner, think about where the outlets are positioned right, in yep. the room when you're setting up <laughs> your furniture. If you're close to a furniture store, you should go and test out different sized recliners. Absolutely. Especially for the primary user. You want that person to be comfortable. Your feet should reach the floor comfortably and your legs should be at about a 90 degree angle. Mm -hmm. The smaller your back should fit into the padding for support. With the powered recliners with lumbar control, it's going to be comfortable for a wider range of people. And your head should be supported in an upright, comfortable position, not tilted back or pushed forward. Yeah. And when you're reclined, your legs and feet should be comfortable. If your feet hang off, it can cause ankle pain. Hmm. At the Lazy Boy store that we went to, they had four sizes for recliners. Their petite size, they say, is for people five foot four and smaller. Small is for five foot five to five foot nine, tall is five foot ten to six foot two and extra tall, six foot three and taller. Mm -hmm. Another furniture store had their recliners grouped as slim, and these were 25 inches wide, small, 33 inches wide, standard, 34 to 44 inches wide, and oversized were 45 inches and wider. Right. So you should be comparing the height the width, and the depth when you're shopping. Also, when you're measuring for the space, you need to know the size and you need to know how far away from the wall. Right. So there's a lot of measuring. <laughs> so my dad always liked a big chair, sure. you know, a wide one, and he had a specific place that he liked the chair, you know, in proportion to the TV. Right, you sure. know, So it was a special <laughs> place. Yeah. But then every year for Christmas, we'd set up the Christmas tree in his area. No way. So he had to move. I mean, he had to fit. Was he every, angry every he, Christmas? He, I'm not kidding. He pouted every Thanksgiving because we <laughs> set up the Christmas tree on Thanksgiving night. And he pouted the rest of the night because we had to move his chair to set up the tree. Messing. And then he pouted for pretty much until we took down the tree. So, and it always had to be like right after Christmas, take down the tree because dad needed to get back to his spot. Messing with the man's recliner. Uh, but yeah, he was never happy during the holidays because of the, we had to move his chair. <laughs> when you're shopping, compare the construction. Four-sided hardwood, plywood, or steel frames are going to be very durable. Two- or three-sided may not be as durable. A stronger frame is going to hold the reclining mechanism more securely and will last longer. And look for any features that show the quality, like mortise and tenon joints or glued joints. When you compare plywood construction, more plies are going to be stronger, like 7 versus 5. <laughs> and plywood is going to be stronger than chip wood. Compare the seat and back support. Steel springs are going to be more durable than rubber webbing. And compare the warranty. That's usually a guide to the quality. Right. On one model I looked at, they had a lifetime warranty on the springs, the wood frame, and the reclining mechanism. Hmm. You're going to have warranties on the other parts, like the upholstery material, mechanical, or electrical components, and you should be comparing all those. Mm -hmm. Also, compare the cushions and the warranties. 
Solid foam, memory foam, and inner spring cushions are all considered very durable. Right. And a lot of these chairs will have weight limits, so hmm. that's another consideration. Right. When you're comparing fabrics, see if they've been treated to repel stains or if they have any special qualities. Some companies have unique fabric blends to be resistant to wear or liquids or pets. Hmm. When we spoke to one salesperson, they recommended microfiber and grain leather if you wanted the most durable material for a recliner. Cool. If you see bonded leather, it's a top layer of a man-made material with shredded leather fibers as the backing. The top is just colored or textured to look like leather, and only the backing has a little bit of real leather in it. Interesting. So it's not going to be as durable as a grain leather which is 100% natural leather. Right. Some top-rated recliners come from Lazy Boy. It's L-A, capital Z, capital B-O-Y, Flex Steel, F-L-E-X-S-T-E-E-L, Christopher Knight. He was Peter Brady on the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Serta, S-E-R-T-A, Mainstay, M-A-I-N-S-T-A-Y, Simmons, S-I-M-M-O-N-S, Home Elegance, and this is spelled uniquely H-O-M-E-L-E-G-A-N-C-E, Ashley, A-S-H-L-E-Y, and Barca Lounger, and they've been around since the 1940s. Barca is B-A-R-C-A-L-O-U-N-G-E-R. Do you have anything else to add? To find the most comfortable recliner, you should get out and sit on some. Absolutely. See what fits your body the best. You want it to support your head, the smaller your back, behind your knees, your legs, and your feet in a natural, relaxed position. Mm -hmm. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our ebooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 13 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, fixithomeimprovement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.